if you're going to be on the political landscape, you have to be extroverted, generally speaking. And one of the things that extroversion, especially in combination with less agreeableness, tilts people towards is a kind of narcissism. Jordan Peterson finally sat down with Ron DeSantis. They did it over, over video. It wasn't in person, unfortunately. Uh, but it is an absolutely wonderful one hour video. And Jordan set out, I highly recommend you guys watch the full thing. We're gonna show you two, two clips right now, but Jordan set out to do something that I thought was really nice. He said at the top, you know, everyone gets it on policy. You, you, you have great policy. You have, you are competent. You don't lie the way politicians do. He laid it out really nicely. He said, what I would like to know is a little bit more about what makes you tick. I wanna know a little bit more about your history, personality, sort of how you go about making decisions. And it was really, really great. And I wanted to show you two clips. Uh, well, take a look at the first one. If you're gonna be on the political landscape, you have to be extroverted, generally speaking. and. One of the things that extroversion, especially in combination with less agreeableness, tilts people towards is a kind of narcissism. And so there's a lot of people in the political domain, media, entertainment, as I said, who are in the public eye, who tilt towards narcissism. But the great leaders that I've seen are people who are very good at listening, who are very good at building teams, and who might balance their ambition with conscientiousness. Now, it seems to me very clear that you're a conscientious person because you stress hard work continually, and you also say that you enjoy it. And those are hallmarks of someone who's conscientious. And that's a very good trait personality predictor of long-term success. It's the best predictor after general intelligence. What I'm, I'm curious about, the mechanics of how you go about building a team, how you've done that in Florida, and what you think you might bring to bear if you were in Washington. I, I read a fair bit about Donald Trump's early year in first year in, in office, and it was definitely the case that it was hard for him to build a functional team. Okay, so that was obviously Jordan sort of setting up what the whole premise of the interview was gonna be. Now let's get into a, li a little more of them actually talking about how you build an effective team. I don't need the credit. And in fact, when things don't go as well, one of the things a leader has to do is say, okay, I'm responsible for that. So there are, th there are times, and, 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 and I, I, I think you, you can't be a really good leader if you try to micromanage anything. I mean, you've got to set the vision, set expectations, and you've got to give people the opportunity to do it without you picking at them. And, and that's the only way I think you can really do well. The flip side to that, though, is that sometimes when you delegate like that, the, the job doesn't get done and people may do things that, that are not in line uh, with the vision. And so what you just have to be able to do is you just have to take the necessary action to correct that. Sometimes you got to replace personnel, sometimes just uh, internal course correction. But I think it's important that you, you, you praise the people that are working for you in public and you, you censor in private. Uh, I don't believe mm -hmm, in, mm -hmm. in throwing people under the bus. I think they got to know that you're going to have their back. What's that thing I always tell you when you hear the truth, like it's just kind of easy to hear and you can sit in your chair and you don't have to, you don't feel that tension because lies actually like they, they fray the very nature of reality and you know when someone's lying and here he is calmly laying out how he believes you should build a team and where you should give, give credit and how you shouldn't throw people under the bus and all that. And you could really see, and again, I, I hope you guys uh, will watch the full hour and I hope that they do it again before Iowa. Um, because they were just beginning to scratch the surface. And DeSantis talks about his childhood and his family. Like, it's really a different interview than you've ever seen. Um, but you get that good insight into what he, what makes him tick. And when you have someone who actually is decent and is out there trying to do the right thing, what you get are good policies. And that's exactly what we have here in Florida.